Hello students welcome today we will discuss about some important questions and numericals of uh, unit 1 and 2 mainly we will discuss about methods how to calculate certain numericals or how to attempt some questions we are not going to solve them uh, completely but uh, i will show you the method how you can calculate them or answer them so first question how many moles are in 4.4 grams of carbon dioxide molar mass 44 so it's a very easy question uh, let us use the example of water molecules suppose you have a water molecules and the mass of uh, water molecule is 1.8 gram and molar mass of water is as we know it is 18 grams okay so how many moles are present in 1.8 grams of h2o so all you have to do is place cross multiplications values okay so that means if you have 18 grams of h2o that means you have one mole of h2o we can say that from the molecular mass molecular mass represents weight of one mole okay so if it is 18 it represents one mole is equal to 18 grams so given quantity is 1.8 so 1.8 is equal to how many okay so all you have to do is cross multiply 1.8 multiply by 1 divide by 18 so obviously it will be 0.1 so in 1.8 grams of h2o we have 0.1 moles of water molecules and if question is about how many number of molecules are there then you have to do is multiply mole with avogadro number 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 so you will get 6.022 into 10 raised to 22 number of molecules are present in 1.8 grams of h2o now you have to do same calculation for carbon dioxide molar mass is 44 given quantity is 4.4 grams okay so now you can calculate now fifth question write ground state electronic configuration of chromium so we will discuss about electronic configuration of fe now first point what is ground state electronic configuration so we have two different type of possibilities for electronic configuration of atom ground state and excited state ground state that means electronic arrangement according to periodic table and excited state that means in certain atoms when they are trying to connect with something else that means when they are participating in the reaction their electronic configurations changes depending on the bond formation so if electrons are shifted in Uh, certain orbitals then it is called excited state we will discuss both of them first of all let us say uh, we want to find electronic configuration of fe so first of all you have to know about the number of fe atomic number of fe and it is 26 so it represents we have to arrange 26 electrons now increasing order of uh, orbitals are mentioned in textbook topic will start from page number 59 energies of orbital so it represents increasing order of energy of orbital now simple rule is when the lowest energy orbital if it is empty then first electrons will enter in it if it is fully filled then electrons will enter in higher energy orbits so it is in increasing order first lower energy orbitals will fill uh, fill with the electrons and then higher energy or increasing energy orbitals will be filled so first uh, as mentioned earlier if principal quantum number is 1 then l value possible l value is only one possible l value is l is equal to 0 and l0 represents s so in principal quantum number 1 you can get 1 s orbit if you have principal quantum number 2 then two possible values are uh, there for l 0 and 1 so 0 represents s 1 represents p as mentioned earlier 
in case of p you will find three possible ml values and according to their spatial orientation we can call them px py pz that means we have three different orbitals in 2p and uh, in 2s we have only one orbital it is already called 2s okay next one we have com principal quantum number 3 so we have three possibilities 3s 3p and 3d and then principal quantum number 4 we have 4s 4p 4d and 4f in fourth principal quantum number okay now let us do a simple mathematical uh, calculation n plus l for each so n value is 1 here and l value s represents 0 so 1 plus 0 is equal to 1 for 1 s similarly n is equal to 2 and l s represents 0 so it is 2 then 2 plus p p is equal to 1 so 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 3 s it represents 3 plus 0 that's why 3 then 3 p it represents 3 plus 1 3 d 3 plus 2 4 s 4 plus 0 then 4 p 4 plus 1 then 4 d 4 plus 2 then 4 f 4 plus 3 okay so these are n plus l value now electrons will be arranged inside the orbitals according to n plus l value in lowest value electrons will be enter first and in higher values electrons will be filled later it will enter inside the orbitals in increasing order so lowest n plus l value as we can see it is for 1s and each orbital can occupy two electrons so first two electrons will enter in 1s orbital then we have 2s orbital as we discussed earlier we have 26 electrons to arrange for fe so it will be 1s2 then we have two more electrons which will enter in 2s orbit so 2s2 then as mentioned earlier in p we have total three possibilities three different orbitals and each orbital can occupy two electrons so six electrons will enter in next p orbital then third s orbital now you may ask in this case both of them are same that means as you can see n plus l value for 2p and n plus l value for 3s both of them are 3 3 if same n plus l values are obtained then we will concentrate on principal quantum number higher the principal quantum number it will be more in energy so principal quantum number of 3s is higher that's why it will be higher in energy and principal quantum number of 2p is lower that means it will be lower in energy that's why we placed 2p before 3s then 3p next electron will enter in uh, 3p and again 6 electrons will enter we have to arrange 26 electrons okay keep in mind then as you can see next electrons won't enter in 3d orbit because n plus l value of 3d is 5 whereas n plus l value of 4s is 4 so next electrons will enter in 4s orbitals okay so till now we have total 20 electrons so next will be 3d now we have total 26 electrons and we already arranged 20 of them so we have only 6 electrons left as mentioned in previous lecture we have five different possibilities for d orbital dxy dyz dzx x square minus y square and z square all of them can occupy two electrons each so maximum capacity of 3d is 10 so all the last six electrons will enter in last d orbital okay so this will be electronic configuration of fe 
similarly for uh, chromium we have total 24 electrons to arrange so obviously according to our increasing order first 1s then 2s then 2 then 3s 3p then will uh, there will be 4s and then 3d okay we need these uh, orbitals for the electronic configuration of chromium now you have to arrange total 24 electrons in it so let us start arranging them 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 now count the total number of electrons till the 4s orbital so it is 20 now we have four electrons left and these four electrons will enter in last d orbital but this is not exact ground electronic configuration of chromium we have two exceptions in uh, this uh, 21 to 30 number of element they are called transition elements so we have two exceptions in transition elements copper and chromium because highest stability of orbitals are obtained when orbitals are fully filled that means as we know s orbitals can occupy up to two electrons max p can occupy six d can occupy maximum 10 and f can occupy maximum 14 electrons so if they are fully filled then their stabilities will be maximum second highest stable electronic configurations are half filled orbitals exactly half filled now for s orbital half filled that means you will get only one for p it is 3 d 5 and f four, uh, 7 sorry so these are the most stable electronic configurations first highest most stable are fully filled and then second most stable is half filled orbitals so because of these type of phenomenon one of the electron of s will jump in d and you will get 4s1 and 3d5 these type of exceptional electronic configurations uh, configuration will observe for chromium and same thing will occur in case of copper electron of s will jump in d in case of copper as well because in copper you will see if you arrange the electrons uh, according to this chart uh, in this order you will find d orbital has nine electrons so one of the s electron will jump in d orbital and d orbital will be fully filtered that means it will gain extra stability so this will be the electronic configuration of copper uh, sorry chromium next is uh, what is the concentration of sugar c12 h22 o11 in mol per liter if 20 grams are dissolved in the enough water to make final volume up to 2 liters atomic mass c14 h1 o16 so from this given information we can say that we have total volume of solution 2 liters and our solute is 20 grams so first you have to do is find the number of moles of sugar in 20 grams but notice here mass of carbon is mentioned 14 usually it is 12 okay so you have to use values given in numericals you cannot use your own values based on your knowledge okay so although normal molecular uh, atomic mass of carbon will be 12 but here isotope of carbon is used we can assume that it is isotope of carbon so that's why it is mentioned 14 so all the values mentioned in the numericals should be as it is you cannot change it so we will use this value and first we will calculate the molecular mass of c12 h22 o11 okay so we have total 12 carbons and uh, mass of 1 is 14 so it will be total 168 for hydrogen 1 is equal to 1 so total mass from hydrogen will be 22 for oxygen we have 11 and 1 is equal to 16 so total it will be 176 so total mass will be 366 okay for given carbon containing sugar 
but let us use value of carbon as 12 okay we are not calculating the exact uh, exact same numerical we are slightly changing it so you can calculate it here on your own so let us use 1 carbon is equal to 12 that means traditional value of carbon so that you will get molecular mass is equal to 342 grams okay so we will use molecular mass of sugar as 342 your value for given numerical should not uh, should not be 342 okay it will be 366 and instead of 20 grams we will use 30 grams okay we have 30 grams of sugar in 2 liters of water and mass of molar mass of sugar is 342 so our values or uh, quantities are molar mass is 342 we have 30 grams of substance in 2 liters of solution okay and our target is to find concentration of given solution so first of all number of moles in given quantity we have 30 grams so you can use simple cross multiplication 342 grams is equal to 1 mole of sugar then 30 grams is equal to how many so 30 multiply by 1 divide by 342 or simply mass divided by molar mass so it will be 0 0.087 okay so we have 0 0.087 moles of sugar how uh, in how many we have 2 liters of solution so again one more cross uh, multiplication if 2 liters of solution contains 0 0.087 moles then 1 liter is equal to how many so 1 multiply by 0 0.087 divided by 2 our cross multiplication so 0 0.087 multiply by 1 divided by 2 and it will be 0 0.00435 okay so this will be the concentration or molarity of our sugar solution having 342 molar mass 30 grams quantity in 2 liters of solution okay again let us quickly repeat our numerical first we calculated number of moles in given quantity that means 30 grams for that we placed uh, cross multiplication values molar mass is equal to 1 mole then 30 gram is equal to how many so we find that in 30 gram we have 0 0.087 moles and uh, then we placed one more uh, cross multiplication values we have total 2 liters of solution in 2 liters we have 0 0.087 moles then in 1 liter is equal to how many because number of moles in 1 liter solution is molarity okay so number of moles in 1 liter is equal to molarity and it will be uh, sorry we, I made a mistake not uh, 0 0.00434 it will be 0 0.0435 okay molarity of solution will be 0 0.0435 so first thing you have to do is divide the given mass with molar mass of substance you will get number of moles in given quantity of solution and then place one more cross multiplication if given quantity of solution is equal to given quantity of moles then one liter is equal to how many sixth question is uh, calculate the mole fraction of ethanol in solution prepared by dissolving 46 gram of ethanol in 90 grams of water so molar mass of ethanol is 46 so you have to do is find the number of moles of each for ethanol we have 46 grams and mass uh, molar mass is again 46 grams so mass divided by molar mass is equal to number of moles same thing you have to do with water we have 90 grams of water so molar mass of water is 18 so 90 divided by 80 and you will get number of moles of water then divide the number of moles of ethanol with total moles that means moles of ethanol plus moles of water and you will get your mole fraction 
again first find the number of moles of each and then divide the given quantity of moles of substance with total number of moles you will get your mole fraction question 9 chlorine is prepared in the laboratory by treating mno2 with aqueous hydrochloric acid according to the reaction now reaction is 4hcl with uh, mno2 gives 2h2o mncl2 and cl2 how many grams of hcl react with 5 grams of mno2 atomic mass of cl 35.5 and mn 55 all you have to do is concentrate on the reactants only we have 4 moles of hcl per 1 mole of mno2 and we need to find if we have 5 grams of mno2 then what is the value of grams of hcl so simple thing first of all as we can see from this balanced equation we have 1 mole of mno2 consumed and 4 moles of hcl consumed okay so per 1 mole of mno2 total 4 moles of hcl will be consumed now let us calculate their molar mass as mentioned for mn it is 55 and for one oxygen it will be 16 we have two here so that means you will get total 32 grams of oxygen so total molar mass is 87 at that time what will be the molar mass of hcl as mentioned for cl it is 35.5 h will contribute one so you will get 36.5 for one molecule uh, mole of hcl here we have total 4 so we have to multiply with 4 so it will be 146 grams so if 86 grams of mno2 is being consumed then 146 grams of hcl will be consumed okay from this equation so given quantity is 5 grams so if 5 gram of mno2 is being consumed then what is uh, the quantity of hcl being consumed okay you have to do this cross multiplication and then you can find your answer again let us quickly repeat first we observed balanced chemical equation from the balanced chemical equation we can say that per one mole of mno2 four moles of hcl is being consumed now from the molar mass we can say that one mole of mno2 is equal to 87 grams and one mole of hcl is equal to 36.5 but we have four moles here so we have to multiply with four and you will get 146 grams so per 187 grams of mno2 consumed quantity of hcl will be 146 grams so let us put it in this cross multiplication values 87 is equal to 146 grams of hcl then 5 is equal to how many on your on this uh, cross multiplication calculation you will find your answer okay last one for today's lecture is explain electronic configuration of he and n according to Pauli and holmes principle so that's why we need to discuss first Pauli's exclusion principle and holmes principle first so as mentioned in this case in short we can say that no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers as mentioned earlier all of the four quantum numbers at least one of them must be different atoms cannot have same set of quantum numbers for two different electrons or in second manner we can say that only two electrons may exist in same orbital and these electrons must have opposite spin okay so we will concentrate on this uh, definition if electrons are present inside the single orbit then their spin must be different that means s value will be different if first three quantum numbers are same then last spin quantum number must be different for the electrons present in same orbit if first is plus 1 by 2 then second will be minus 1 by 2 compulsory or even in simple manner we can say that if electrons are present in same orbit then their spins will be opposite same spin containing electrons 
cannot be placed inside the same orbitals. Now electronic configuration inside the electronic orbitals will be represented with this type of boxes. As mentioned earlier in S orbital we have only one orbital, in P we have three, in D we have five and in F we will uh, get total seven different orbitals. So uh, as the number of orbitals increases we will add more and more boxes. For S orbital we will place only one box, for P3, for D5 and for F we will place total seven box. And each orbital can occupy two electrons with opposite spin. So spin of electron can be represented with half arrow. Suppose if this half arrow pointing upward uh, represents spin value plus 1 by 2 then second will be in opposite direction representing spin value minus 1 by 2. So how electrons are arranged if uh, in S orbit first electron is pointing upward then second electron must be pointing downward. Same thing in P orbital first electron will be placed like this. Now if you want to add one more electron in same orbital then it must be oppositely spinning okay according to our first principle okay so this is the simple explanation for uh, police exclusion principle now next one is hun's rules of uh, rules of maximum multiplicity now maximum multiplicity that means spin multiplicity now if electrons are spinning then their spins will be neutralized with each other if they have opposite spins but if electrons have same spin then they will contribute in each other's value that means overall spin value of atom will increase if all the electrons are spinning in one direction but if they are uh, spinning in opposite direction then they will cancel out each other's effect so according to this rule it deals with the filling electron into the orbitals belonging to the same subshell okay so same subshell that means we are talking about uh, as for example for p orbital if uh, we have p orbital then as we know we have total three different boxes in it so we are talking about this so according to hun's rule let us say we have few electrons to arrange inside this p orbital so as mentioned earlier if first is called px then second one will be py and third one will be pz and all of them are equal in energy Okay, energy of all of these three p orbitals are exactly same. So let us say if first electron is entered in first p x orbital, then where second electron will enter? Second electron must enter in one of these two empty orbitals because if they have same energies, then electrons cannot be entered in single orbit first. Okay, pair of electron cannot be placed in first orbital directly. If you have third electron then you have to place it in third empty orbital now all of them contains one one electron each so next fourth electron will start pairing like this then fifth electron and then sixth electron okay so this type of arrangement will be observed now let us do it for d orbital as well so all of these five d orbitals are equal in energy so if first electron enters into first orbital then second electron must be entered into empty then third fourth and fifth and now if all of them contains at least one electron then pairing will start so electrons will be added in next orbitals like this okay so this will be the arrangement order of electrons in empty orbital that means for p orbital suppose you have four electrons then this type of electronic configuration is not possible. At least each orbital first occupies one electron, then pairing will start according to Hund's rule. Okay, so this is the simple representation of Hund's rule. Okay, so now you can try to find electronic configuration of uh, helium and nitrogen according to Pauli and Hund's principles. And if you find any confusion, feel free to ask.